Welcome to Miss V, the Storyteller Podcast. This podcast is for anyone who has lost their voice and want to get it back. I lost my voice at a very young age, and it took me years of pain and hurt to get it back. On this podcast, I will bring you personal stories, stories that will make you laugh, cry, think, heal, and in some cases, propel you into making new and better choices. At the end of each story, I share with you my thoughts about what happened, and I also ask you probing questions to make you think. No answer is perfect, and no answer is wrong. So let's get started today with our special guest. I am so excited to have Lori Grant on my podcast today. Lori and I, we had a greet and meet meeting a few weeks ago. And let me tell you, her and I have so much in common. She's a storyteller like me. So you know I had to have her on my podcast. She is also going to be starting a podcast. So we're going to learn so much about Lori today. With that said, Lori, tell us a little bit about yourself. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good. good. So yes, um, I actually work full-time at a nonprofit, gave up my big girl corporate job uh, to do something that I loved, which has been really, really fun for the last couple of years. Um, what I love, I'm an author, so I have three children's books that are published, and Ooh. I have uh, two more in the wings right now. And um, I'm also uh, I'm also a blogger. Oh. And I'm also now a podcaster. So we have lots of things in common as far yeah. as that is concerned. Yeah, that's awesome. I love the author part of um, what you're saying about you being an author because I am too. Not children's books yet. But that is something that I want to do long term. And a little bit later on, I want to write um, stories um, for children. They're so, super fun. I know. I used to teach. So I know I love the little ones. And I used to love sitting on a carpet and telling stories and making up stories with them. And you yes. know, as a storyteller, we can make up a story on the spot. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because I used to do that with my kids all the time. We would be in the living room and I'd say, okay, let's pick three objects in the room and make up a story. And we did that all the time, but I didn't have any idea that was weird. <laughs> I thought that was normal. And you know what? That is a storyteller because I realized that with me because I've been a storyteller like my whole life. <laughs> and I used to sit on the carpet and tell stories with the kids and just make them up. And they yeah. would think, oh my God. Yeah. But I know we have a lot in common. So yes. tell me which one of my stories resonated the most with you? Or I, I know you told me you liked a lot of the stories, but yes, which one are we going <laughs> to, which one of them are we going to talk about today? Let's talk about gifts and talents today. Oh, oh I yeah, loved yeah. that one. That is a great one. Yes. And in this particular episode, I share with you about how God gives us all gifts and talents. And yes. I shared about a gift and a talent that he gave me working in the theater um, doing hair and makeup. And then it progressed to him moving me into working at the children's ministry at my church. But what I didn't know is I was getting prepared for that when I was working with the children, when I was working with the theater company, because that was working with children. So yes. yeah, it, it was amazing how God put that gift in me, but he was also preparing me for another gift that he was going to utilize later. So Lori, tell me, what was it about the story? Well, there's two different gifts that I'll tell you about that are, that absolutely relate to your story. But the first one is, is the obvious gift that I, that I do the writing that I never saw writing on the radar, never saw it. Really? Um, I was a praise and worship leader. I started doing music, came from an incredibly musical family. I started doing uh, praise and worship when I was 16. Wow. And so I was always doing music. I was writing, I was recording, I was doing commercials. I was, but it was all music all the time. And, and that's really how I was, uh, that was my gift. That's what I did. You know, when, when you do that much music mm -hmm. in a church, I was doing about 20 hours a week of different 
areas within the church of music. So oh. I thought that was my gift. And I thought that's, you know, that's what I was going to do with it. And that's not to cut you off, but yeah. that is another thing that you and I have in common because I used to <laughs> sing in the choir in church <laughs> for years. Yeah. But yeah. go ahead. <laughs> yes. So the writing piece, I never thought I was going to write. That was never something that uh, I thought ever thought of. So the reason I started writing was because my grandmother passed away quite young. And I remember asking grand my grandmother questions about, tell us about mom, tell us about mom and what she was like when she was growing up. And my grandmother only told us the same story over and over. And so I didn't learn that much about my mom growing up. Then as I got older, my mother ended up passing away when I was only 35. Oh, now she was yeah. a kindergarten teacher and that woman had stories. They were hysterical wow. stories, hysterical, but they were all gone too. Mm. And so I decided that being a person that a lot of funny things happen to, I'm, that's why I'm a storyteller <laughs> because a lot of stuff happens to me. Yes. <laughs> um, I decided that I would start capturing my stories of the things that were happening to me and the lessons that I learned from them. So, because I wanted to capture for my kids, that's the only reason I did not start writing these stories for anyone else, but my kids. Oh, that's so, so that's sweet. That is so nice. And that's the best way to do it. When you're doing something for your heart, for your kids or for someone yeah. you love. Yeah. yeah. And so I started writing these stories and I was teaching a woman's class. It was called when women walk alone and it was a women's singles okay. class. And it just so happened that one of the stories that I was writing, or I had written actually, um, absolutely completely paralleled and applied to this particular lesson we were doing that week. So I brought this lesson with me. I brought this story with me to the lesson and I read it to the ladies. They loved it. And they said, we want you to bring a story every week. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, That's exciting. Wait a minute. <laughs> wait, I don't write for anyone but my kids. And actually my kids could care less. They weren't, li they weren't reading them yet. So that kept me writing. And so now I was writing for my kids. And then now I was writing for these women. So when I got done with the class, some of the women said, well, you know, you need to just start a blog and just start writing your stories and just mm. capturing them. And I thought, well, that's a really good way for me to capture all these stories. And then I can just put them all together in a few years for my kids in a book and be done with it. So that's where I thought it would end. And, and you know how you said, God prepares you. He gives you mm -hmm. all these little twists and turns. And so my best friend, uh, her daughter was getting ready to go to VCU art school and her name is Katie and Katie had not ever had a job and she didn't have anything, you know, she was an artist, phenomenal artist, but didn't really have a lot of connections. I said, here's the deal. How about I just write you a story and you do the illustrations and we'll self publish it. Thought, oh, that would be just really fun. And so I did all this work looking for it. Now, here's the deal. Tina, my best friend, and Katie and I were in New York. I believe it was Tina's birthday. And Katie had her drawing pad. She wouldn't show her mom, but she would show me. So when Katie was in the shower, Tina ran and got her sketch pad. And we're looking at all these amazing, beautiful artwork. But, you know, kids and their moms. Yeah. You know how that and so the shower goes off and, and Tina goes, oh, no. And she runs and she puts the book back. So Katie comes out and she's dressed, she's pretty much ready to go. And I, and I said, Hey, Katie, you know, I've never really seen your artwork. Will you show me some of it? <laughs> and Tina is standing behind Katie and she's giving me the, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> and I'm just kind of acting like an amp, you know? And, I, and so of course, Katie says, sure. <laughs> she runs and grabs her book, plops it down on her, on my bed. And we start going through it. And Tina's just standing there with her arms crossed. You know? oh. We're looking through it all. And I said, how about I write you a book about, about fairies? She had this really cute anime kind of picture. And it looked like a fairy to me. And she said, well, you could do that. And I said, well, well, yeah, I'll just write you a story. And I said, you know, my daughter was terribly, terribly afraid of the tooth fairy, which is hysterical. Oh, wow. <laughs> And so I wrote Katie a story where the tooth fairy was afraid of children. Oh, okay. Super fun. Yeah. Super fun. Really easy. Made it as descriptive as I could. So her illustrations would be easy. 
So it, while she's doing the illustrations, and I say that in air quotes because you'll know why in a minute she was doing the illustrations, mm -hmm. um, I went off and figured out how we were going to self-publish it, what it, what we needed to do, how mm -hmm. all that worked. So I'm ready. And Katie made the main character, which happened to be her mother, Tiny Tina, the Tooth Fairy. <laughs> um, so she did her mom and she didn't, she never did anything else. And I was so excited about writing this book and it was so easy and it was so fun that that launched me into writing another book, wow. which I ended up publishing, Wow! which launched me into another book, yeah. which ended up publishing. So when I did my first book that I actually published, it was hysterical because the name of the book, and we can talk about this later, but the name of the book is why is there an elephant in my basement? Oh, okay. And it's based on excuses and accountability. Okay. And I presented this book to my high school musicians. I was actually leading a youth band at the time. Oh, okay. And I brought the book with me and the kids were like, Miss Laura, you are not going to read a kid's book to us. These are high school students. They didn't know that I wrote it. And I said, well, you guys just, just let me do this with you. Let me, you know, just, just kind of just humor me. And so I read them the book. And then at the end I said, well, can you guys tell me what the elephant represents? Oh wow! Your eyes got huge, <laughs> just like mine. Because like, oh wow! They're like, oh no! Curve. Yeah, oh no! You know. <laughs> and I said, "What does the basement represent?" And they just looked at me like, "What?" And so I explained to them the basement represented your life, the elephant represented something that was in your life that shouldn't be there, and then we started talking about elephants on our basements. What are things that could be in our lives that shouldn't be there? And typical teenage responses, it could be this, it could be that, it could, you know, and we had this fantastic conversation about what do we do when there's things in our lives that shouldn't be there, mm -hmm. right? We let them out. And that's the preface of the book. So there, here's the cool part. Here's when I knew that I should be writing. It was about six months later, one of those kids came in and sat down next to me. She was 16. She says, guess what, Miss Lori? And I said, what? What, sweetie? And she said, I got rid of an elephant out of my basement this week. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Oh, they heard me. Yeah. So that's where the writing came from. I never, never, never saw it coming. But you and know, so, that's so funny that you said that again, not to cut you off, but that is so funny. You said that because that's how, you know, it's a gift and a talent for God, because it's not something that you knew you could do. You thought you can do. It's like God orchestrates the whole thing for you puts yes. people in your past and just helps you to make those steps. And that's, it sounds like yes. that's exactly what he did for you. Yes. And I needed that affirmation. I, you know, I was writing, mm -hmm. but why was I writing? I was writing because I was just capturing stories for my kids. No, I wasn't. I was learning the craft of writing, but I didn't know that. Yes. You know? And so then I did the book and why did I write? Oh, I was just writing a book to help this, you know, girl get into art school. Mm -hmm. No, I was actually learning the craft of writing. Yeah. So, so that's what really tickled me about your story was you don't always know when God is preparing you to use a gift that you probably didn't even know. Sometimes you don't even know. Right. So it's, it, it's been fun. It's been really, really fun to watch it kind of blossom, you know, and then um, I'm probably going to steal some of your thunder here, but, and then to, the podcast is literally an extension of all of that. You know, I started blogging and I realized I had 50 some blogs and I'm just writing away. And I'm, I, two years ago when COVID started, I thought, oh, great. I'll have all this time to write. Mm -hmm. I quit writing because I was kind of like, you know what, God, you're not, why am I writing? Why am I right. doing this? Yes. No one's listening. Yes. No one's reading my blog. Why are you doing this? And, and I really felt him say, keep writing, keep writing. And I was kind of mad. I was just like, mm -hmm. I'm spending all this time. And then suddenly the opportunity came up to start a podcast and God wants me to use all the stories that I've been writing. And that's, again, that's okay. why you and I have in common because right. I had all these stories written before I even knew about a podcast or anything. Yes. And I, I, oh my God, this is amazing because my, st I start writing stories and I just kept writing and writing, writing. And then I wrote a book in between. And then I wrote, I started writing another book, not knowing where God was going to take it. Yes. And then I just put those stories on yes. a podcast. And then a month ago or six weeks ago, he was like, now I want you to do the next step with the podcast, the podcast and have guests come on the show. Right. And I, right. I just appreciate God for 
us recognizing that yes. they, they are gifts and talents yes. from God. And he wants us to use those to serve people. Yes. And that's exactly what you're doing. You serve through singing. I did. <laughs> and then we start writing. It is, oh my God, this is so good. So what do you think about people in their gifts and talents? Do you believe that all people have gifts and talents or is it just, you know, God picks us? What do you believe about that? Well, I think the Bible is really clear that we all have gifts and talents. Yes. So I do believe we all have them. Um, and if you talk to somebody that says, oh, I don't have any, mm, that's probably not true. I mean, that's not biblical. So um, I think the spiritual gifts tests are always really good. Mm -hmm. But I think sometimes people have a gift or a talent that they don't necessarily, they want something else. Right. They, now, they want I, a different one than God has given them. Yes. And again, I actually have written blogs on that exact, on that exact uh, subject. But I do think people sometimes, um, I'll give you an example. There was a, a, a man that I knew in music. A lot of my stuff will go back to music because I did it for so long. And this guy was the best pianist I have ever met. Honestly, but, and I've been around some amazing musicians. This guy, could play any piece of music, any key at any time set in front of him. Didn't matter what time signature it was. Didn't matter what key it was in. He, he could read any piece of music. He could play it. But here's what was special about this guy. He could also play by ear. No. He could play anything he heard. Yeah. Now that's it, a gift. Yes. Incredible yes. gift. Yes. But you know what? He wanted to sing. He wanted to be front center and yeah. sing. He did not want to sit behind a piano. And I remember that I was pretty young. I was, um, I was probably 23, 24 when I met him and my heart ached for him because he was one of the most talented, gifted people. And he didn't want to use the gift that God gave him. Wow. He wanted See, a different gift. You know, and this is so funny. Uh, and I'm glad you shared that part of the story because it's, it, it brings to mind that, um, someone said to me a long time ago, and I've heard this numerous times, that God gives us all gifts and talents. And if we don't use them, we will lose them and he will give them to someone else. And right. I think sometimes that because we want it so something so different, so so badly, God is like, no, this is where I'm going to bless you. This is where you're going to reach. You have no idea what I'm going to open up for you by you just going here. Because I didn't think about hair and makeup. I mean, when I was in, I went to school for cosmetology, you know, and I did kind of sort of want to do it, but it wasn't anything. I was doing hair. So each time I was going to help them to do hair, but then I end up doing the makeup. And then it, it and then God was like, okay, I was like, okay. All right, God, is this where you want to? But I think also you have to be open. Don't you think you have to be I was going to say, I was going to say, you have to have that. Uh, you you kind of have to have that spirit of receiving what it, mm -hmm. what maybe, maybe humility, I guess maybe humility is a better word. You know, would you do this? Oh, oh, well, okay, I'll try that. And you ended up being really good at it. Right. You know, you wouldn't have known had you, had you said, no, I only want to do this. Right. You may have never known that you had a gift to do that. Absolutely. You're, you're absolutely right that we do have to be open, yeah. you know, and it's kind of like, try something different. You might yeah. like it, you know, instead of, and I think sometimes we get stuck in a box because the, the, the gentleman you were just talking about, is like, he was stuck in a box and he was like, this is what I know, what I want to do. This is, I know I can do this. Yes. You know, I want to sing and I don't, I know I can play, but I know, and this is what I want to do is sing. It's like, okay, well yeah. maybe you playing the piano is going to open up later for you right. to sing. Right. But I so, think his pride, I think his pride got in the way. I think he, and, and I also know another musician, I've known another musician in my lifetime where he, it came so easy to him, mm. but they don't realize it's a gift. Right. Oh, that's a good point, Lori. They don't realize it's a gift until somebody else says, I can't do that. I can't even come close to what you do. But they don't understand because it's just come so easy that they don't, they yeah. want something else. Yeah. But you know what? I think also we, 
as Christian women, you know, we realize and we know the words. So we know the right words are gifts and talents. And then some people think, oh, it's just a hobby. Mm, No, everybody doesn't know how to do that hobby, (laughs) you know? So, oh my God, this is so good. I am so glad that you're on here. Yeah. And it's like, like kindred spirits, you know? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So do you have another similar story? Cause I know you said you had another one. I don't know if you already covered it. I gotta think of which the other one was. (laughs) I'm sorry. We just start talking. I should have written it down. Oh no, it's okay. It's okay. But while you're thinking of it, let's go ahead and answer the questions at the end. Because um, on my podcast, I always ask questions at the end. I tell you what my thoughts are, and then I ask questions. And um, what are your gifts and talents? What gifts and talents do you have? Just tell us the names of them that you know that this is a gift and a talent for Lori. Okay. Um, And I did remember what it is, by the way. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Uh, gifts and talents. I um, obviously have a love of music and I, and I do have to tell you that I have to work for it. It's not something that is, was just placed Mm -hmm. in my lap and I could just do, Uh, but I, but I do, I do have the gift of music. Okay. You know, so, um, but, but I didn't, it, I do have to work for, uh, and I think it keeps you humble as well when sometimes when you have to uh, work out a little bit, but um Another gift I would say that I have is to make few people feel comfortable. I can talk right. to anybody anywhere yeah. I go. That is and a I'm, gift because everyone doesn't have that. You're absolutely uh, right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'll say hi to people and, and sometimes they, sometimes they are not responsive too. And I have to understand that, er, you know, everybody doesn't want, maybe you're having a bad day and you don't want, want this strange lady saying hello to you. I don't know. But I always talk to my waitress. I always, you know, I'm always talking to, you know, the people at the bank or not, not chatty Kathy, but just mm-hmm. trying to bring a little sunshine into their day. Yeah, you know, that is a gift. In a because, pleasant. Yeah, that is a gift because everybody doesn't have that. And I, I like you said that to, you know, to make people feel comfortable and all that, because a lot of times people think gifts and talents is something big, like being a storyteller, being a writer and all that. No, sometimes a, a, um, a gift is just simply being loving or being friendly or being kind because everybody doesn't have that. Yes, absolutely. I think, yeah, I mean, I, if I really, you know, I'd have to really kind of think about it you know, I think a lot of the gifts that I have are quite kind of quiet. I, I say that I'm always, I've always said that I'm going to write a book. I don't, I don't know if I ever will called always the co-pilot. Okay. I have a, I have a gift of being a co-pilot. Okay. I am really good in that co-pilot chair, anticipating what you need, when you need it, how you need it. How do I, how do I make you look better? So I'm going to relate that back to music. I was praise and worship leader for years and years and years. My favorite thing to do is to be a backup vocalist. Listen, my favorite is to make that praise and worship leader sound good. Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, we are kindred spirits because <laughs> I'm a background person. I love to make someone else shine, Yes, you know, or push them to help them yes. to reach their highest potential. Yes. And I also think that is also a gift. I think so. So, Anybody that's listening out there, listen to Lori and Miss Vita Storyteller. A gift and a talent is more than being a singer, a writer, a you storyteller. Don't need to be a star. You, you, you can be just, you can have a gift of being kind or serving people. Serving. I, yes. I think serving is like the key word here because, you know, if we go, we would go on mission trips or we would go serve. My job is usually to support the people that are out in the field mm-hmm. serving. Yes. My job is to wrangle up the high school students and make sure that, you know, they're eating and they're sleeping and they're meeting curfew. You know, my job is to make sandwiches for the kids so they'll eat while they're, my job is usually behind the scenes. Yeah. But you know, oh my God, God just dropped this on me because, um, Someone has shared with me about, um, it's called The Chosen. I don't know if you ever, see, okay. And yes. this, the scene just came in my, just came in my head about the disciples. They all had different gifts and talents, but they were also serving Jesus, which was also another gift. 
Yes. You know, because he, they were able to serve him and meet the needs that he needed to be able to go on and do what he needed to do. So again, that's like you said, serving and serving yeah. with your gifts and talents, you know, because some people can just be selfish. I'm a writer. I'm just going to write for me. I'm not going to get it out in the world. Well, you're not serving your gift. You're just being selfish and hold it. And it's like, no, God didn't give it to you for you to hold it. He gave it to you yeah. for you to push it out into the world and to serve. Absolutely. I agree with you hundred percent. Cool. Well, Lori, thank you so much. This yes. has been such wonderful. fun. It's so wonderful. listen, I know that you have books. I do. Several books. So please tell my audience about your books where they can find them, okay. and if you have anything else going on. Okay, okay. So, oh, and I was, and you had asked me about the gift. Oh, the other. I, the other gift. Right, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so let me tell you that story really quick. I'm a storyteller, okay. so of course I'm going to tell you. I know, you, just like me. Yes, go ahead. <laughs> so I was doing praise and worship. I was, I was, it was a very large church. We had two uh, contemporary music bands. We had two adult bands. We had two high school bands. And then we had one middle school band and I was asked to lead one of the high school bands. Okay. So I was terrified. <laughs> I was terrified. I, I, I didn't, I wasn't a teacher. That wasn't, that right. wasn't something that I was comfortable, especially with crazy high school students. That was, that was a gift that I found that, that I, I had, and I didn't know. I mean, I'm not doing it now, you know, I'm not using that gift now, but, and I, you know, and I kind of alluded to that a, a, a little bit ago when I was telling you about the young lady that sat down next to me and, and all right. that, but the teaching, teaching of those high school students, I was terrified. I was terrified. And because high school students are smart. <laughs> they are, <laughs> you know? they're different too. <laughs> and, and honestly, honestly, that ended up being one of the, one of the most special, I don't know if that's pro proper English, uh, experiences of my life was, wow. was mentoring and hanging with these high school students. Yes. So again, you got a gift. You don't really know. God puts you in a place and he asks you to use the gift that you didn't really know that you had. Mm -hmm. And it ended up being, it, it will always forever be one of the most, most meaningful experiences of my life. Wow. So that's, yeah. that's another note on gifts. So Anyway, I just thought I would, I want to make sure you knew that. Oh, no, that's good. No, no, I wanted you to share because I remember you said it earlier yeah. and, and we started talking and, and you know, <laughs> us both being storytellers, so we can go on and on and on. We so, can. yeah. <laughs> so tell us about your books because okay. I'm so excited about okay. that. So I have three books. The first one I told you a little bit about, it's called mm -hmm. Why Is There an Elephant in My Basement? Yes. I told you a little bit about that one. Now it's about excuses and accountability. It's, and, and the reason that, so you go all the way through the book, why is there an elephant in my basement? It's all, all these excuses. And at the end, it gives you the answer to why there's an elephant in your basement. Oh, wow. That's answer, special. The answer to why is there an elephant in your basement is because you let her in. Oh, so you so special. Her yeah. That's that's the, first special. One. Okay. the second one is, the second one is called little white flies taken from the expression, it's just a little white lie. lie. Oh, got you. So, yeah. so, this, so this book is about honesty. Okay. Um, it's about six piglets that are running amok. And one of them has a little bit of a honesty problem. Okay. And how he kind of finds his way and how he fixes it and kind okay. of figures it out. The third book is called I Am Beautiful Too. Oh, and this I one, honestly, that. right now, this is my favorite book. Oh, um, I love it, the title. I love it. You would love it. It's a super, super cute little book. It's about a white peacock. And a lot of people think that white, pe white peacocks are albino peacocks. They are not. They okay. are white peacocks. And they are stunningly beautiful. Just when they open, it's like this lace and they're just beautiful. But it's a little about a little white peacock. His name is Albie. Okay. And his name is Albie because he is not an albino. Yeah, that's, okay. my, oh, that's, that's my quirkiness coming out. <laughs> that's cute. And um, he does not think he's beautiful because he has no color. And so he goes through the zoo and he starts collecting color from all the other animals. He thinks everyone is beautiful but himself. Okay. And so he gets to a point where he's kind of a hot mess. He just, he's all these colors Aww. from everyone else and he's kind of lost himself. And so he goes to the white snow owl and he says, 
you know, I, I wanted to be beautiful and I'm just, I don't look anything like myself anymore. And that really relates to what we do as people, you know, we think, um, you know, and, and talents and gifts and talents mm-hmm. relates to that as well. Oh, he has that. And he has that. And, and, and pretty soon you lose yourself in right. all the things that you want to be besides who you are. So he goes to the white owl, uh, the white owl. And he says, but you're most beautiful when you're just you. Oh, and so he goes, sounds beautiful. So he goes home and he kind of thinks about it. And the next day he looks at his reflection in the, in, in the water, in the lake, and he sees he's gone all back to white. And he says, I am beautiful, I am too. beautiful too. Oh my God. That is so special. Thank you. It's, it just turned out really, really great. And here's something that is super important, which is really cool. The person that illustrated that book is Katie. <gasps> oh my God. That's <laughs> amazing. Yeah. Oh, no. that is, see, she is using her gift and talent. Oh my God. Um, so I have to get that book. Yeah. So that's really fun. So my next book, I, I've got two of them rolling. I'm not sure if I'm going to, which one I'm going to do for, uh, 2022, one will be 2022 and one will be 2023. I'm going to okay. release the book every year. Um, so the two that are going, um, so it's going to be a surprise, whichever one comes in first, okay. um, is either dragon breath and okay. it's about hurtful words. Okay. I okay. Usually, I usually pick a topic that's kind of relevant as to what's mm-hmm. going on in the world. So dragon breath is super relevant for the last couple of years and people's words and hurtfulness and, you know, how, do, how, how do we fix that? We treat meanness with kindness. That's what right. this book is about. Yeah. And the other one um, is called um, Arnie's light. And okay. it's about, it's about a firefly. Okay. Whose light is a little dim in comparison to everyone else's. Everyone else's. Yeah. And so he finds a friend and they become friends. And she teaches him that the light of two butter, two fireflies can get them out of the tunnels. So oh. you, so it's about, it's about companionship and friendship and, and how you can shine your light on someone else and completely make a difference. Oh my God, that sounds beautiful. So please tell us where yes. we can get those books so we can, oh. you know, come on, tell us where to get them. Sure, sure. Uh, so you can check my author's page. Okay. It's uh, www.lauriedgrant, and that's L-O-R-R-I-E-D-G-R-A-N-T.com. And my blogs are there and my books are there. My books are also on Amazon. Okay. And if you want them signed, yes, yes, I would I love agree. for you to let me know. Um, I would love people to check out my blogs and communicate with me. And you know, if anybody is interested in having speaking or any any kind of communication, I would love, 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 love that. And um, I also my podcast is called Storytellers with a Message. Right. And yeah. that is how it's on Apple. And, um, you can find, and, and you can also email me at storytellers with a message, uh, at gmail.com. Perfect. And I'll make sure that in the description that I have the names of the book and everything, cause you sent it to me. So I make sure if, every, if they didn't catch it by ear, that it's already there so they can just yeah. pick it up. But Lori, thank you so thank much you. for agreeing to be on the show. You have been this, amazing. And I, yes, it was. And of course, listen, you guys, Lori and I will most likely keep in touch because oh. we have so much yes. in common. So again, thank you, Lori, for being yeah. here. Thank you. Take care.